What's going on? That's okay. That's okay. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning. We are live. Okay, so today, today this is what we're going to do. Instead of reading the gospel for today, we will continue talking about death, but something about something about what happens after death. Okay, um, because the gospel for today is uh, similar to some other gospels we have already read in the past few days. But today I want to bring up um, a very important topic, and that has to do with uh, purgatory, sin, purgatory, and indulgences. Okay, so this is uh, this is interesting. Okay, let's recall when Adam and Eve were still in paradise and they committed original sin, the original sin, right? What happened to them when Jesus was, when God was calling out Adam and Eve in paradise and said, Adam, Eve, where are you? What happened to them? They played hide and go seek. They played hide and go seek. <laughs> did they really play, play hide and go seek or uh, what did they do? They, 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 they went and hid themselves, right? They hid themselves, but they did something else. They did something else. The, 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 the story in the gospel tells us about something, uh, a very concrete thing that they did. Hid themselves in leaves? They actually covered up themselves in leaves, right? They got leaves from the trees and covered themselves up. Now, of course, that's a metaphor. A metaphor for what? Shame. Shame. Shame from the sin they committed, right? And look, that's the effect of sin. It causes us to be ashamed of what we did. And not only that, not only the, not only the shame and the guilt, okay, the guilt uh, is the effect of sin, but also, but also there's another thing that sin does. <coughs> and what is that? It alienates us from God. Okay? Sin has that, has that uh, so-called uh, effect okay, of alienating us from God, of getting us away from God, of making us ashamed to be in His presence, of actually depriving, depriving ourselves of the benefit of being in the good graces of God. See, that is what sin does to our soul. And so, therefore, that kind of thing is a punishment. Okay? It is a punishment that, that sin has a way of causing to us whenever we commit sin. So, really, uh, technically, <laughs> if we can even use that word uh, as far as sin is concerned, uh, it, is, it is not God who punishes us when we commit sin. Okay? God is not a vengeful God. Who, who would punish us because, because uh, we, we committed sin against him or we offended him. Okay? It is just like Papa and Mommy. When you do something wrong and we punish you, okay, or you get, it, is not because, it is not because we, uh, we want to inflict on you any kind of pain out of vengeance just because, just because we are bad. Okay? No, we, we, we tend to... Uh, to deprive you of things or we tend to give you a kind of a lesson to learn how bad your infractions or your sins are. It is for your benefit because at this stage when you are young, sometimes you don't realize that you are doing bad things. And sometimes the only way by which you make, we can make you understand that is to deprive you of some good things that that otherwise um, you uh, you should have you may have if you were in uh, in your, the good graces of your parents so to speak right but if but because you are incapable at this point of understanding that then sometimes we have to make you learn your lesson but when it comes to sin when it comes to god well he does not have to make us learn our lesson in any way other than uh, what sin itself is already causing in us. Okay? Every time we commit sin, we ourselves already cause that deprivation. We ourselves already cause that alienation from God. So the punishment there that is due to sin 
is really not coming from God. It is something that sin by its own nature uh, inflicts on us. Okay? Or it, we ourselves actually cause it on ourselves every time that we commit sin. Okay, so what is what is the, this in relation to uh, death and uh, and the last things? Well, whatever sin we commit on earth, okay, there is some sort of repayment that happens because there are consequences. Every time we commit sin, there will always be a consequence, a consequence that we inflict on ourselves practically, not that God inflicts on us. Okay, and so because of that, we feel we would feel all the shame and all the guilt uh, upon death that we cannot present ourselves to God. See? We will feel very ashamed like Adam and Eve did. We will feel very ashamed to present ourselves before God at the hour of death. So, but at that point, like Adam and Eve, there's no more escape. Adam and Eve had nowhere else to go. God found them. They got busted. No matter how much they cover themselves with leaves, it does not hide their guilt, does not hide their sin. So the same thing is true with us. When we present upon death and we, we are presented in the throne of God at the particular judgment, well, there's no more avenue, no more way for us to make up for sin. See? But in His mercy, God provides. See, that's what God is. God is all merciful. Even if He's all just, He's also all merciful. So, what did God do? God gave us, <clears throat> or will bring us to a place of perfection. To a place, sorry, to a place of purification. And that place of purification is? Purgatory. Purgatory. See? So, God will tell us, okay, well, so you are not very well prepared to come and see me yet or to live with me eternally in heaven as I had invited you to. So, okay, go to the place of purification, which is purgatory. Okay? So that is where now uh, our soul will go if we had died uh, uh, in the state of grace, but not quite prepared to see God uh, in a pure state. Okay? We got some cleaning up to do. So, our soul needs to be purified in purgatory. Okay, so now, <clears throat> so we go to purgatory. And how long do we stay in purgatory? Well, there's really no telling okay, until we are uh, prepared to uh, see God face to face, until we are all cleaned up. Now, how's that? Now, um, okay, now, but, but, you know, there's some good news. There's some good news. We can actually either shorten our purgatory or completely evade it, completely avoid it. Here on earth, here on earth, while we are here on earth, this is the acceptable time. Remember, we were talking about it yesterday. Was it yesterday or the other day? Today is the acceptable time. This is the acceptable time, the time by which God uh, is giving us to be able to... Um, uh, not only sanctify ourselves, but at the same time make up for uh, our infractions, our sins, and the wrong things we have done. So this is the acceptable time. This is the time to make up for our sins here on earth. And we can do it. God also has given us the means. The church has given us the means okay, to do this. And we have to avail of that. If we are wise enough and we want to avoid purgatory, okay, uh, we can avail of what is called the... Well, well, yeah, but I'm talking about indulgences. The indulgences. Okay? So, let's talk about indulgences. The indu indulgences are, let's read from the Catechism. This all comes from the Catechism. An indulgence is a remission before God of the temporal punishment due to sins whose guilt has already been forgiven. Okay? So, remember... The guilt of that sin should first be forgiven. Now, how does that happen? Confession. Through confession. So first we have to go to confession. Okay? okay. Sins that have been forgiven, which the faithful Christian, who is duly disposed, gains under certain prescribed conditions.
through the action of the church, which, it, which as a minister of redemption dispenses and applies with authority the treasury of the satisfactions of Christ and the saints. Okay, that's a mouthful. That's plenty to, to uh, understand. But anyway, let's explain it a little bit. So indulgences are a way by which the punishment due to our sins are removed, erased. Okay? Some of them are partially erased and some, uh, and, and at times it can be completely erased, totally erased. Okay? Now how does that happen? The church has been given the authority by Jesus Christ. Remember what he told Peter? Whosoever sins you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whosoever sins you loose on earth are loosed in heaven. So the church now, the church now is given the authority to dispense such kinds of indulgences or removal of sins based on the authority that Jesus Christ has given the church. Now, where does the church get the the uh, the um, so-called uh, 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 treasure trove, okay, uh, of um, of the merits that it dispenses, that it gives us. That treasure trove is taken from the merits of Jesus Christ's suffering and death. See, when Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross, the forgiveness that He has dispensed for the whole of mankind is just. Uh, is just um, unlimited, eh? and and also the graces of our Our Lady, and also the ones of the saints and everybody who has already gone to heaven. This forms the treasure trove, so to speak, from which the church draws draws the uh, the wealth of forgiveness and mercies that it now dispenses on on us on souls of. Uh, the faithful who avail of them, who ask for them. Okay? But there are conditions to be able to ask for these indulgences or benefit from these indulgences. Okay? What, are the, what are the conditions? Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, review the conditions. Number one, uh, we can only gain indulgences for sins already forgiven. So that means we first have to go to confession. confession. So confession is the first requirement of gaining an indulgence okay the second requirement is to go to communion to receive holy communion because the expectation is if you did a sincere confession okay and you you were sincere and repentant from that confession then you are in the state of grace and therefore you can go and receive holy communion the third condition is pray for the the pope and his intentions Pray for the Pope and his intentions. Okay, Those are the three conditions to gain a plenary indulgence. So, And uh, recently, during the Jubilee year 2000, the church relaxed the time frame okay, uh, within which you can avail of uh, a plenary indulgence if you fulfill these three conditions. So before, you had about seven days, you had about a week to be able to uh, gain that plenary indulgence. But the church has relaxed that rule. Now you can gain that plenary indulgence within 20 days. Okay? 20 days from the time that the uh, before or after uh, the plenary indulgence is given, okay, you should have been able to fulfill those three conditions and still avail of the uh, plenary indulgence. Okay? So... Now, but are indulgences the only way by which we can uh, uh, gain the remission of sin? Well, no. Indulgences are not the only way. Okay? And sometimes indulgences uh, are not always readily available for us, right? Just depending on, uh, on uh, how we live our lives. The other way, and the other very good way, not only to uh, 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 remit sin, but at the same time to avoid sin, is... By living the spirit of mortification, the spirit of sacrifice. Okay? We will tackle that in another uh, discussion, hopefully. But mortification is a very good way of also making up for our sins. And uh, helping us uh, uh, fight against the tendency of sin. The mortification means denying ourselves. 
of uh, our legitimate uh, pleasures or wants and likes okay? and uh, offering up those mortifications for our sins and for the sins of others. Now, but do you know, okay, here is one thing that uh, many Catholics don't know. You can actually gain a plenary indulgence every day. By the way, you can only gain one plenary indulgence a day. Okay, only one. But you can gain one every day. Do you imagine that? You can actually gain a plenary indulgence every day. Okay. And you know the secret? You know the secret? How do you gain a plenary? <laughs> you know the secret? Okay, tell us a secret, Joe. How do you gain a plenary indulgence every day? Okay, very good. See? By praying the Rosary of Our Lady as a family. As a family. That is the way you can gain. Easy way. The easy way to gain a plenary indulgence every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. How good is that? Right? How good is that? Every day you can gain a plenary indulgence. If you pray the Rosary as a family. The complete rosary, by the way, from beginning to end, okay, uh, in in one in one fell swoop, okay, not partitioned, not uh, taken apart, but one full rosary uh, can gain for you a plenary indulgence. Now, of course, that all depends on how you define what a family is, okay. <laughs> now, uh, of course, if 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 you if uh, let's say you don't have all your kids with you. Uh, anymore or uh, at a particular point in time you don't have your kids with you well whoever is with you and is your family uh, you can pray the rosary with them and they you gain the plenary indulgence okay so it doesn't have to mean that you have to complete your entire family all the time so uh, family there means well uh, those who are uh, uh, with you and intimately uh, related to you in one way or another and uh, are considered family those people who uh, uh, pray the rosary uh, together that way can gain the plenary indulgence okay? every day so if I were you make it a habit make it a habit for your own good <laughs> for your own soul's benefit Make it a habit to pray the rosary daily and the complete rosary at that. Okay? And fulfill the three conditions. Okay? But if you know, if you if you go to confession regularly, okay, once a week or so, at least within the twenty days or every other week, if you go to Mass and, and uh, receive Holy Communion uh, every Sunday, okay, and hopefully you pray for the Pope while you pray the rosary or offer the Mass, then it's so easy. So easy now to uh, gain that plenary indulgence, right? The church is making it so easy for all of us to go to heaven, folks. The church is making it so easy for us. In fact, too easy sometimes. <laughs> if we still don't go to heaven, it's really our fault, right? It's really our fault if we still don't go to heaven after all the things that we can avail of all the things we can do for our own benefit. So let's take advantage of all of these things. And I hope to see you in heaven. I hope to make it there myself. So, you know, we all, that's all the aspiration we all have, right? Okay, Joe, what's your question? Uh, Come on, do it fast. It's time. Did you, like, give a definition to having plenary indulgence? And you said you could only have one plenary indulgence a day. Does that yeah. mean you can keep on having yeah, as I said, every day you can have a plenary indulgence, but you can only avail of one. You can do many things to gain a plenary indulgence every day, but you will only be granted the benefit of one. See? So like we can pray we can pray two, three rosaries in a day, which is which is sometimes we do when we go on a pilgrimage, right? When we go on a pilgrimage, we pray three or four rosaries, and that's all in one day. It doesn't mean to say we will gain four plenary indulgences. We will still just gain one. Okay? What other questions do you have? Can Nothing more? we go yeah. to church? Okay, it's time to go to church. Okay, folks, that's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. And remember, avail of a plenary indulgence. You can do it every day. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.